Leanne. Michael, today we have Steve Barkhouse here with a very practical renovation and some post-Halloween horror stories or renos that became horror stories, but there's always a fix. Steve Barkhouse joins Leanne with a renovation many of us would find realistic. Leanne. Realistic, practical, and it may ring really close to home. Uh, Steve Barkos is here of Amstead Construction. We're going to share the sort of post-Halloween reno horror stories with you in our next segment. <laughs> this one is, is uh, if you own an old home and you have an attic, you probably are familiar with it being either too hot, it sounds like Goldilocks, either too hot or too cold. Yes. Yeah, too hot, too cold, uh, no storage, uh, poor design and layout. Mm -hmm. This is a typical home in the Glebe area, but they're all over Ottawa with that great space on, in the attic, but uh, it's often lost. So this was the before picture, so it wasn't a bad space. Um, it was just totally unusable because in the wintertime, it was too, summertime too hot, wintertime too cold, uh, no ventilation. Um, two professors live here, so you can see the books everywhere. Uh, so they had no place to put their books. You can see the fan down in the bottom corner there, trying to get a little airflow through the windows and get so that they can stay up there. But it was really unbearable. So we gutted it out, um, and we put a spray foam in there, a soy-based spray foam, closed cell, and that both insulated and supported the structure. So okay, it was a combined. Explain that a soy-based closed cell. Insulation. Yeah, so it, it's uh, with a water-based spray so that it doesn't off-gas. Um, you can actually occupy the area within hours of spraying it on. Um, obviously, the, the water dissipates and it dries out and expands into place, so it also offers some structural integrity as and well. And do you always, oh, we're going to show you the afters in a second, but just on the insulation front, is that always an insulation you choose to use or is it a specific insulation for a specific situation? Um, we often choose that one. Rarely is there a situation that we need something different. Um, we like it because it's green and it doesn't off-gas and it's soya-based and a lot of good things about it. Um, and the closed cell, which offers better insulation properties. Okay, we already had a little sneak peek at the yeah. after, but here's the real after. Ooh. So a lot more storage space. You can see the cupboards are built in, lots of natural light. Um, we opened it up, taking advantage of the ceiling details, but not emphasizing them. And so how did you deal with the heating issue? You'll see it on the next picture, actually, but we brought a, an air conditioning unit up from the outside, and we also ran um, warm air ducts and ventilation, cold air returns, up into the third floor, up through closets down below. So it worked out really well. You can see it up there above the window, very discreet, but that provides the cold air. And as cold air drops, it actually cools the second floor as well, which was a little bit uh, hot during the summertime. You see the storage for the books? Fabulous. Took advantage of this dormer area that was really useless before and made it a walk-in shower. So the glass block at the end is waterproof. The entire area is waterproof with tiles, and it's a walk-in shower that doesn't need a door or any enclosure because it's so big and the drain's in the middle there. So the whole walk-in shower bathroom, if you will. That is pretty swanky. Isn't that pretty cool? Great. Yeah, in a very small area. Yeah, and you can see the storage areas on the side as well. So we're looking at about a $100,000 renovation here. Now, I have to say, though, a lot of people who are watching are going to say, I've been living with, you know, we all live with frustrations, and you just sort of adapt, and yeah. then you do a renovation, and you think, why didn't I do that sooner? <laughs> when we come back uh, with local and provincial award-winning uh, renovator builder, Steve Barkos. Um, you just received these honors, eh? We did, nice. yes, thank you. Oh, don't get all modest <laughs> and blushy, but I love that. We're going to be back. We're going to show you, well, how duct tape and a whole lot of other things don't do the job. These are some renovation potential nightmares, and perhaps they'll be familiar, not to you, Michael, <laughs> but just to maybe someone out there. Duct tape can't hold a house together? No. Well, let's go back to Leanne Cusack and Steve Barkhouse with renovation tips and advice on how not to have a reno nightmare. We all need that advice, Leanne. Michael, we've been having a lot of fun. Actually, it's been a <laughs> bit of a game show here during the commercial break because Steve's brought along a lot of photos, and I do not fancy myself a handy person, but even I was able to spot what was wrong in these pictures. Let's actually put it to our viewers. We'll sure. give them a second to look at the okay. photos that Steve's brought along. What do you think may be wrong with this image? And I did guess this one right away, that it. there's the cold air vent next to the hot air radiator. Exhaust, Exhaust. Yeah, yeah, so the hot air is coming into the room and getting sucked right back out and into the furnace, and uh, that room's not very warm. So, yeah, it's not very warm, it's not very cool, but yeah. here's the issue. How did you end up fixing that? You just had to slide. We're not going to go to that one yet, but how did you fix that? Yeah, we just had to move that one. Uh, move one of the two down. So the hot air should be down lower at the floor. Mm -hmm. um, the cold air can be up higher but further away so that you get a vortex created in the room. 
And here's a, an issue with this. When you have the um, radiators on the ceiling or whatever, the, the vent on yes. the ceiling for heat, it doesn't really make sense because the heat rises and it's working hard to push heat down into the room. Correct. That's, that's why you bring the cold air down low if you have to have the heat up there, like in a basement, to suck it down to the floor level. Okay. There's our first lesson. All right. Showing viewers this one. I think everyone will figure out what was wrong. This is priceless, <laughs> actually. So that would be the chimney next to the air conditioner in the window. Yes. So as with every picture, there's some creative solutions often involved. So what I think they're doing here is instead of just sucking the exhaust, hot exhaust air out of the furnace into the house, they're cooling it first, which <laughs> is kind of fun. Um, yeah, you cannot have a chimney that close to a, a window. It's dangerous. The exhausts are going into the house. Um, it's just kind of a, a bad idea. And again, all of these are someone that had a good intention, just really didn't understand what they were doing. And this is where you agree with Mike Holmes, hey? I do. Mike Holmes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Mike says there's 10% of contractors out there that are professionals know what they're doing, 10% that aren't, and you want to stay away from them, and 80% that mean well, but just really don't mm -hmm. understand the whole process. Okay, here's our next image. This is a tricky one, too, because that's kind of a plastic PVC pipe, and I'm guessing it's near a hot a heat source. Absolutely. So the pipe was melting, obviously. Um, you can use those PVC pipes, but it was located too close to the exhaust, so it was melting, and to prevent it from melting, they stuck a piece of paper in there because we all know the paper's not flammable. Yikes. <laughs> these people are very, very lucky because that could have been absolutely hazardous. Uh, with all of these, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So here's the next one. <laughs> this is one we guessed as well. Show our viewers, give you a chance, okay? Yes, Martha's right, and so is Harold out there. Uh, you should not have a light like this in a shower and definitely not a light switch so close is because of moisture. Yes, right? absolutely. Humidity and moisture. Um, it's a shocking situation. Uh. It's a <laughs> non-vapor light. So you can buy lights that can go into showers that are vapor proof. Um, this one's not. It's a standard pot light. So does that mean that the moisture would be getting into the ceiling and then creating a potential mold issue? Uh, it'll be getting into that electrical fixture and causing sparks and, and um, That's disconnects. even worse than what yes. I was thinking. And okay. you can reach out and touch the uh, light switch and electrocute yourself that Which way. Which you shouldn't do when you're kind of wet in the shower. No, exactly. no. Okay, next Next up, whoa, okay, tin foil shouldn't be a fix, I'm guessing. <laughs> exactly, so the plumber got it right this time. The pipes are away from the, the heat source and the vent, but the pipe was a little short, so the HVAC guy didn't know what he was doing, or probably the plumber was doing the HVAC. Um, so that's a good place for tin foil, right? Just to extend <laughs> that pipe out a little bit more. Um, so that's leaking into the house and causing uh, some bad air in that if place. If this for sure. is your handiwork, we apologize. <laughs> and that's why we're not we're not shouting anybody out or calling them out by name. We have a few more images to get through, actually six, so we'll go rather fast. Okay. This one, um, I couldn't figure it out, except for I knew that that plastic bottle wasn't supposed to be there. What were they trying to do? Well, they just used the wrong piece of pipe. It should just be a straight piece of pipe. They had a T unit, they popped it in because that's all that was left, and then they plugged it with a water bottle that it will uh, deteriorate or fall out, and you'll have all kinds of problems. Next image, I'm guessing that water should not be falling from the <laughs> ceiling. That one was hard to find. We checked, there was a wet uh, crawl space. We thought, oh, maybe water's getting in from the outside. I looked in that crawl space and couldn't see anything. Finally, I asked the client to run the water, and the water just poured right out. They forgot to connect the drain. So I'm wondering if maybe they didn't pay the plumber, but... <laughs> <laughs> Next image, uh, at first glance, I just thought, wow, that does not look like a safe electrical panel. And you said, no, it doesn't have a cover, but we're noticing that there's a little rodent in between both sides of the electrical panel. Yeah, that poor lad was trying to take a shortcut through there, and there well, should be a cover on the electrical panel. It was a shortcut, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, he shorted it out and blew the breaker, which was great. If he hadn't, it would have caught fire and burnt the house down. My heavens. Okay, so the moral of that story is... Cover you up your panel. Just follow the code. And seal your house so you don't have <laughs> no mice or rats. Yeah, that was a actually one. a rat, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, this one is very handy. I like the creativity here. I like it too. It looks um, like a bit of a sculpture. You know what? If you don't know how to use the pipe wrench, there's a good place for it. Um, <laughs> and also a barbell weight, which I tell you doesn't get used a whole lot at my place. Um, <laughs> And that, obviously, the jack post was too short, so they just uh, furred it up with a couple of <laughs> pieces okay, of material. This next image is one, the one we've been waiting for. Uh, this red is green. the red-green fix. Love no, it. So what was the duct tape attempting to do here? Yeah, that's a cross member that supports the roof, and with the snow load, <laughs> it had cracked. Um, so the handy homeowner got up there and taped it up, and uh, it was good as new in his mind. Oh, gracious. Okay, gracious is all I could come up with for that one. Now, last but not least. So this one, uh, just back to the theme of, of planning and, and uh, having a professional in. Um, here was a client that wanted to do a major renovation to the basement. Before we started, we did a forensic inspection like we do, and we found that the uh, washroom on the first floor wasn't draining. The tub and the toilet weren't draining very well. So we ran a camera down to find out what it was. We found this. We were able to open it up, fix the pipe before we did the renovation to the basement, which would have had to been destroyed 
to open it up because that pipe ran all well, the way across the basement. And that's another great example. We had a, a we had all kinds of gadgets and gizmos here on a, during a past show yeah. to illustrate how you don't have to deconstruct in order to do the forensic uh, search, as you said. Correct. Okay, that was really fun. <laughs> Not fun for the people who had to fix it. And yeah, I'm sorry, but everything had a. They were all happy. Happy, happy, happy endings. endings. And we should say if you are getting ready, because typically this is when we have you on to make your fall suggestions for winterizing yeah. your home. But we thought this was a little re really good post Halloweeny. <laughs> but you've put that on the website, Steve. We have. We've got a checklist on the website. We highly recommend that you have a look at that. Um, lots of do-it-yourself type things, the gutters and all the stuff that we usually talk about. All there on a quick checklist so that you can check it off and if you have any trouble, uh, hire a professional. And we actually also have that list of what to look for when you're about to hire a contractor. Absolutely. On your website as well. There's yeah. a link to Steve's website on our website. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. That was interesting. Michael? That have was you ever very, fixed anything with that, duct tape? Yeah. That was very <laughs> interesting. Yeah, hold up your house with duct tape. Stay with us. Still to come on the program. <laughs> The magic carpet ride in Midtown Manhattan will explain. Flowers provided by Richie's Feed and Seed. Be one with your garden.